or a prejudice. And I think that people need to know that the mentally ill are capable of doing things. And we, we're making art and we're working in the workplace and we're out there in the community working. It's really um, a boon for me to become someone who can actually assist people in learning how to um, produce art and not to direct them because I'm not qualified yet to do that, but to um, facilitate, to encourage them and to empower them. And that's what I do with people who are diagnosed with uh, mental or psychiatric illnesses, which the great thing about that no one knows about is that they're all curable. The title of all of them are Delusions of Grandeur. So am I really an artist? I think we're all only limited by our imagination and unfortunately the stereotypes and the stigma that uh, the media and uneducated people have um, really seem to, they put people in boxes and my idea is you, you, you're only as limited as your imagination. You have to kind of be what everybody thinks you can be and uh, reach your own dreams. It's, it's very possible. I mean, for myself, um, I'm becoming a licensed clinical social worker, so it's been a long path, but it's doable. You may at one time have been diagnosed with a mental or emotional um, psychiatric illness, and it's a past tense. lets you express yourself and gets your emotions out onto paper and or onto canvas or out onto a mosaic bottle. It helps you get things out that you keep in the inside. And it shows the public that you know the mentally ill are capable of doing things. It really helps because you escape. You sit and you start the art, and once you get into it, you lose all track of time and, you know, just what it is. And it's, it's very therapeutic and soothing. I love it because it just allows me to be free and to create and explore a part of me that I've never, that I never knew existed. And I also am seeing a lot of improvements in my other clients' work. Some of my students were not willing to lift their heads off the table and do anything. And last week I said to my, Janice, I said, Janice, can you, can we, can I submit this to the show? And she said, you know, well, sure. When I've been hospitalized in the past, and I found that art therapy groups have helped me tremendously. And, uh, brings you out of the blues and it uh, helps you recover faster and it brightens your mood. I encourage other people who don't think they have uh, any art talent to give art a try. It's really creative and inspiring. I'm an alcoholic and I uh, used to drink. I haven't had a drink in 10 years or a drug and uh, so now I can go to my studio and paint and draw and I'm very grateful for that you know because a long time ago I was unable to do that because of my uh, addiction problems and my mental illness and uh, it really helps with my mental illness and my uh, and my addiction problems it gives, puts me much more on an even even level and uh, makes me feel good about myself for me it's making a piece of artwork and so that's what gives me self-esteem. Marie told me about the a Saturday art class way back in 1998, and I came on a Saturday on a Saturday afternoon, and uh, and I've been coming off and on since 1998. It's a, it's a lot of fun coming to art class. This is not an art therapy class per se. It's a Saturday drop-in art class. However, dealing with a variety of personalities and different people in recovery of different types of recovery. I'm really being inspired by different people finding their own creative voice. Well, uh, number one, it gives you self-esteem. You see, you can put something down and you can say, oh look, I made this, this is fantastic. I, can't, I couldn't believe I could do that. Self-esteem is very important, you know, to feel good about yourself, 
There's a lot of different styles. I read the uh, Dr. David D. Burns 10 Days to Self-Esteem workbook. I worked it over five times. Art's just a great thing all around, whether you're depressed or not. Uh, you know, if you notice this uh, art exhibit here, we've got paintings in all shapes, sizes, and colors. So I'm showing um, some animals painting, and they're all reproduction from the original. Uh, and the and I only have one or two left. And then I'm showing two Jewish paintings, which is uh, going to be in my forthcoming book um, called The Mystic Brush, about 17 tribes of exotic uh, Jewish people in the past, which was my dissertation. Um, that's how I got my PhD. And, um, and these are all Chinese. The originals are all Chinese brush on ink on rice paper with pastel. And it's, it's, it's only take me like two seconds because drawing ink on um, rice paper is like drawing on blotting paper. I'm in the permanent collection of the Legion of Honor, which they have the cheetah. I think I, I, I'm the first pioneer who keep the traditional Chinese style and draw Western animals. And then I was sent to Assisi to save the birds. So this is St. Francis was Sissi, and this was the, the city hall the mayor bought it, and this is the permanent collection of the city hall in the Sissi now. This is my uh, first attempt at um, my artistic talent, and these two paintings up here are what I call spiritual abstract, and um, what I do before I paint is I pray to God and ask for inspiration, and then I paint. Gary Knittel's work at the top rung, and he has really come into his own, and he has, he has thanked me for almost saving his spiritual life, because he's found something that he can now work with in a really real way that he wasn't able to before. All my work, as you see behind me, is very colorful, bright oil colors. I'll, I'll go through a stage where I have to get all those bright oil colors out of me and the, and the brush strokes and the, and the um, subject matter needs to come out. Then I'll all of a sudden go through a period where after that I will want to do charcoal drawings and I'll do a lot of large charcoal drawings and I'll have to get that charcoal drawing stuff out of me. I drew Pearly the goldfish, Pearly for peace, earlier that afternoon. Uh, I went to a peace demonstration in downtown San Rafael at Courthouse Square, and and it was and Lynn Wolsey was speaking there. So after that, I went to the art class and I drew Pearly for peace. This is the Garfana woman, and I found her in a National Geographic magazine. I took my first ceramics class at Tulane and Loyola University in 1996, and. I took studio art at prep school prior to that, and I, for some reason, always seemed to be like best in show, although I never really put any effort into it because I was a very serious synchronized swimmer and an athlete, as well as a student. I've been painting on canvas since February this year, so about five, six months. And my traditional training is actually college-level jewelry production. So this is a new thing and a branch out for me. So I've really been coming along working on doing lettering with my pieces that shows off the graphics, such as the one on top, which is my latest Gone Bananas, which I feel epitomizes our show here, being a recovery show. I'm ever so grateful for Community Action Moran and for, because one thing that's very important is when I worked at Enterprise Resource Center and Linda Reed Daycare Activities, I went in there and I felt like an alienated. I didn't feel like I belonged. And by the, after five years of working there, I finally started feeling comfortable and understanding that maybe I fit in here because I'm a peer. I'm a peer counselor, which means that I am mentally ill myself and my family has struggled with mental illness and I've had a lot of deaths in my family due to mental illness. And um, I think it's my responsibility to carry on 
my sobriety and do what my father or my mother or my brother or my sister would want me to do in my family. So it's very personal for me to be showing in a show like this. I was diagnosed with major depression in my early 20s and it's been a long process of recovery. Um, I've had my downs and my ups and I've just started to get back on my feet again and work in um, with the mentally ill again. Um, recently as a peer counselor. A peer counselor involves helping one with life skills and helping them with a small problem such as housing or food or how to ride the bus system. Well, I also taught at Linda Reed Daycare. I taught art there for five years and I taught at Enterprise also and I also taught on the weekends. And um, I feel that I'm an artist and it's my responsibility after going through college and going through school, it's my responsibility to pass on what was fr so freely given to me. And I want to give to, to other people my gift which is art. I also wanted to give people that don't usually get a chance to show their work in shows in galleries or cafes a chance to show their work and be seen. And a lot of people, I don't like closet artists, you know what I mean? People that make art but they just sit, it just stacks up in their closet. I like to see, you know, see what, what did you do? Oh, that's fantastic, you're wonderful helps your self-esteem, you know, it helps you come alive and feel good about yourself and share with others. I'm taking some uh, peer counseling classes uh, to learn more on how to give back to those who are where I've been and in their illness and uh, to hopefully inspire them and encourage them to, you know, to get to recover, to better their lives. I'm taking the peer counseling case management classes at Enterprise, and I'm learning so much about what can be done to actually, you know, empower clients and consumers who come into us and those that don't, and to bring in people who, for their for reasons, reasons of culture or stigma or society, don't feel like they can come out with some kind of, you know, illness, it's a shame because the sooner they do that, the sooner they get help, the sooner they get recovery. And it's really, it's really just, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's a beautiful service to provide and I'm so happy to be at Enterprise doing that. So.